Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. This is Mark Hyde and Chris Fuller. And on today's episode of Real Talk Christian, we're talking about peacemakers and what does it mean to be a peacemaker in today's world. Fuller, are you ready? Let's go. Let's go. Bro, what is you doing? Oh, sorry. I was doing my imaginary tambourine. Bro, what was you doing? That's a, that's a CCM, man. That's a CCM tambourine. Yeah, you sound like a boomer just saying CCM. Well, it's because re- if you remember, all the CCM music used to have, t- every song had tambourine. That's in true. It. So okay. That's why I used it. Fun fact to start the episode. You hear that, Beth? That was his fun fact. You like that? At the very end of, uh, not the very end, I don't know why I was saying that. I don't know at the very end of the episodes I was thinking. But the, the the church I was at back when I interned here here locally in, down in Bremen, there was a tambourine and one of the people who was on the worship team, every time they sang, they had the t- tambourine. The worship pastor started hiding the tambourine and every time this dude was on worship team, he freaking went and found the tambourine. Tambourine. So I like, I mean, it was at least on so, rhythm and it was on beat, but we're like, dude, you can't have a rock and roll song with a tambourine. Sure you can. You've never seen me. So... Paul Lindgren. We got to put you in touch with Paul. I have so many stories. Dude, so we need I to just have to, Paul back on the show. We, so, we, I don't know, do. man. But I, I I used to drive a, uh, a Mercedes E320 uh, back in the day. So what? Like wait, what does that one look like? Is that like the cheapy cheap Mercedes? Like It wasn't back in 1994. That's true. Uh was I, it like? But uh, was that was that like their intro class? Like I just I'm trying to no, think. No, it was their upper class. Oh, so it was it was somebody lux- was fancy. It was luxury. Well, I bought it in 2000 and. Eight or 2000 and, 2008. And that was pre family. And that was 1994 when it was made. So it's an old little thing. It was and old. that was pre that was, was pre kids. It was pre kids. Pre wife. But, anyways, I used, to have, I, I used to carry around a tambourine and I would play it on the steering wheel. No, you wouldn't. All the time. So Dude, while Paul, you were jamming, Paul you would play on a, on a in your car. All the time. Everywhere I went. And Paul will attest that. And so, as a, as a joke, when I did get married, Paul used to tell that story to Janelle all the time. And so Janelle and her family bought me like these little mini tambourines for my fingers. Oh, come so on. So they said that I could be safer when I drive <laughs> to do the t- finger tambourines. Oh, goodness. But either way, uh, happy Thursday, everybody. If you're listening on release Thursday. day. Yes. Which not everyone listens on release third, day. Third week in January. Dude, we are it's all... a little chilly, a little cold. Dumpster fire 2020 is behind us. And we're in... We're in the Arctic freeze of 2021. I don't we know. don't know yet. We don't know. We still don't know who's president at this point. <laughs> Every date of recording. <laughs> but by now, the inauguration should have happened. Right? It's January 18th, I, mean, I believe. It should, so. but... Doesn't but, matter. But right now, at time of recording, it is November something. I think 19th. Time of recording. Well, we don't want to give away how far away we're recording. Well, but. so, <laughs> all right. So give them the real, scoop. Give them the real f- inside talk. family Real talk. Scoop. RTC real talk here. So Mark and I. I uh, need some like soft music to play underneath <laughs> you when you do this, but I don't have any. We need like an, a, an epilogue mu- type music. Yep. That's what I was thinking so, too. Uh, I got the Halloween music. N- let's do the Christmas music. Do the, do, the, do the Christmas music in January? Yeah, sure. Why not? It's cold. So... So here's the story of a, of a lovely lady who had three blonde children of her own. Oh, wait, that's the Brady Bunch. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where is this going? It's like, what? So last year, early on, Mark and I decided to do a thing where we batch recorded uh, prior to Thanksgiving in order to have Thanksgiving through Christmas off, but still being able to bring you our bring listeners content. content every single week. Um, it gets kind of crazy with our schedules during this time in the holiday season. So we do this. We, we don't want to just stop the season halfway and like make everybody wait. Because if you're like me, when I listen to podcasts, I don't like that. I, I personally like to continue to listen. We do do a break in the summer for um, we did a month of, this the, past year, the end of a season. So we ended season one. We took a month off and no content for that month. And then we went into season two. And so um, we decided that that was the way we we're going to run it. We're just only going to take uh, a month break once a year, and that's going to be summertime. 
and then the rest of the year, you guys are going to get content. So there you go. We're batch recording for the holiday season. So we can for us. enjoy holiday with our family. And you guys can continue to enjoy RTC through the holidays. I love it. So that, and that Christmas music. That, that was that was some <laughs> solid Christmas music behind that the, was. That was that was a jam. But we really do need to download like a a monologue. We do. We really do. Like some type of thing. But anyway, but get into the podcast. Yeah, we got. We're, we're just gonna go quick, bro. We got no reviews to read. Right. No yet. coffee. We're drinking. We're drinking. Okay, yeah, yeah. But La but not. Croix. We're not just drinking Lacroix. We're drinking watermelon Lacroix. And the more I drink it, the more I like it. When it I hits first, different, bro. When I first it did drink different. it, it was like. Mm, I, it, it's like I like it, but I kind of don't like it. But the more I drink it, it's like all now, right. Before it's on me. all the people be hating on me for having Lacroix watermelon in my fridge, Lacroix. I well, I mean, I do drink Lacroix, but I I bought this on accident. But <laughs> I bought it all these. I don't know I why you're ashamed. At, but could you imagine? Why are, okay, why are you ashamed? I'm not. Ashamed. It's because I'm. I guess I'm a millennial, so it, it fits. But drinking Lacroix, you know, just well, yeah, I'm whatever. talking about the watermelon. Oh flavor. well, this is what's funny. Okay, so you're like, it was a mistake. That's the first thing you told th- me. That's I was why like, it's funny. I, I meant it was raspberry. It's I like, thought it was. But but could you imagine like expecting like a raspberry hit, and then all of a sudden you get punched <laughs> in the face with this? And you're like, what on earth did I just drink? <laughs> yeah, that would. So be weird. I keep this intentionally in my fridge because when it's like three o'clock in a work day, and you're like, I've had so much coffee, I don't want water. I want, I still want something to get me through, but it, it but it's not something that. You're gonna drink a lot of it's can, just something to sip on. Can we agree? And it's different that Lacroix and Bubbly and all those are only good to drink when they're cold. They are horrible when Why they're warm. Why would you drink one when it's warm? So I used to buy them, right? Or right. Janiel, let's be honest, Janiel used to buy them for Dang me. Dang it, Janiel! No, uh, no, it was good. I asked oh, her to. Oh, oh, but way to be Janiel! I would, I would put them in my lunch pail. Oh, and then, um, you know, I wouldn't get to them right away or whatever. Right, right, right and right 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 right. and then they would get warm and they're disgusting warm (laughs) (laughs) so i stopped drinking them all together but the past couple of times you know a couple of weeks so i've been drinking one of yours and it's like "Mm, i might have to go back to buying these but so i got this at aldi's the good old aldi so for all y'all asking us because there's some people who actually reach out to us say like we actually thoroughly crack up when you talk about what coffee you're drinking well, I mean, you know, you got to mix it up when it's you know, really late. We, we got to keep it light before yep. we get heavy and then we end it light again. So that's, I mean, but watermelon LaCroix, if Fuller asked him before he drank, he's like, is it good or is it bad? It's like, yes. Yes. And, and you were right. It was a hundred percent. Yes. On both of those. It's, it's the, it's, it's the uh, kombucha face girl. You have that little like, mm, then, hmm? it's a, huh? Mm, right, it's, it's kombucha mm, girl face that you yeah, make with, right. with LaCroix. But either way, we ain't drinking coffee. No, we're not. We drink in watermelon LaCroix to bring you, you how to you be a piece. You got to sound sophisticated when you say it, though. It's LaCroix. La I, I can't do that. LaCroix. I don't know. Okay, let's... let's Anywho, let's, so today we're talking, <laughs> and we're going to keep this one short again. We've had we're gonna work two on long, Although, amazing interviews. We're at eight and a half minutes, so uh, we're going to have to pick it up. Man, but we've had two great interviews to kick off 2021 right. with Andrew Wood with... Talking about pro life after birth, and then with Cope talking about how how to talk yeah. about um, raising Christian kids. Right. Yeah. So two amazing yep. long conversations. So, so we're gonna keep this one a little yeah. bit shorter. So we're gonna just Let's plow see. through it. Ooh, <laughs> you like my snow reference? <laughs> plow through it. Anyways, <laughs> are you doing it with an equally yoked plow? No. Uh, well, that's I'm be doing fun. it. I'm doing it with big truck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Anyways, so well, we're gonna. You know, it's just me and Mark again, and Mark loves quotes. I do. So I do. I do my best to um, be a peacemaker. Oh, <laughs> bro! I put the quotes you. in your <laughs> Thank you. You're so, this, so cute. This one comes from Jim Wallace, and he says, "Anyone can love peace, but Jesus didn't say blessed are the peace lovers. He says peacemakers." He is referring to a life vocation, not a hobby on the sidelines of life. Whoa. Okay. Back yeah. up. Yeah. That's good stuff. Jesus didn't say, blessed are the peace lovers, but peacemakers. Right. He, wow. He's referring to a life vocation, not a hobby on the sidelines of life. Right. Did you just describe the American church? Yes. Twice over. Anyways. Holy <laughs> snap, dude. So like, that's, un- that's that's a quote. So let's let's discuss a little bit. Where, where does this come from, this this. This word, peacemakers. Why don't you let the peoples know, Fowler? Well, anybody who's spent enough time in church should know where this comes from. But Uh, if you don't. But if you don't, that's okay. We're going to describe it now. And then those who are newer to the faith, this will be a good time for you to learn this as well. But this passage comes actually from the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5. 
and it is the seventh beatitude. Uh, so it'd be verse nine because the first two is describing that he's up on the mountain getting ready to speak. Um, so verse nine talks about, and it says, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God. Hmm. So this is Jesus directly saying this. So blessed are the peacemakers, right? So what is a peacemaker? Yeah. You know, this is kind of one of those verses that I see a lot of cops post on their Facebook walls and cops get tattoos, you know, cause they're supposed to be the peacemakers. I've never no? seen that. Maybe it's just okay. the cop friends that I know. Maybe. Maybe they're Bucci caps. There you go. <laughs> but blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons, sons of, of God. God. Right. Okay. So, first of all, there's a huge difference between a peacemaker and a peacekeeper. Okay. Okay. What, so, what do you mean by that? So, a peacemaker goes into bad situations and makes peace. Okay. Hence the word peacemaker. Right. <laughs> uh, and peacekeeper is already been established. They're already in a situation of peace and they're maintaining the peace. That's a peace. Oh, keeper. so, okay. So kind of like when you have a business, you have the person who starts the business, but then you have someone who just manages the business. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's a good, that's a good analogy. Good job. Oh, Mark. thank you. I'm so proud of you. So, so going back into it though. So how does that, like, I, like seriously, how does that apply to the Christian life with so, these keeper versus maker? So we're, you know, we're not called to be, um, peacekeepers okay. or just peace lovers, as Jim Wallace says. Right, right. Um, peacemakers. That means we're, we're supposed to go out into the world and make peace, create okay. peace. Um, that means going into the situations in the characteristics of ambassadors of God and in the characteristic of being Christ-like people, followers of the way. Right, right. Which means fruits of the Spirit coming into play here. you got to do it in gentleness and love and in peace and in long-suffering and all these things, not at the tip of a spear. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> so, right. So there's a huge difference. And this is where I think, um, you know, the church has a bad connotation of, well, you guys are persecutors. Just uh, I always hear this. Just look at the medieval times and, the, the you know, the Dark Ages. Okay. Talking of the Catholic Church. And the Crusades. Okay. Um, that they're like, see, those they said they were being peacemakers too, but they did it at the end of a sword. Right. It's like, well, everybody makes mistakes. <laughs> right. I mean, that I, I I've always said that that was a a thing that the church did that should have never been done. Right. It, we should have never. Agreed. First of all, the kingdom is not if they if they were following the true Jesus of the Bible, the kingdom is not of this world. Um. And if it were so, if it were so, his, his disciples would fight for it. But his disciples didn't fight for it. And Jesus so, told them not to. It, right, exactly. He told Peter to put away his sword, sheath his sword. Uh, and so we were never called to to create peace by the end of a sword. So how were yeah. we cre- and, called And before you go into that, for if someone wants to see what it was like in the medieval time with actually the way the church was a part of the infantry and all the different things. What was that one show? Was it on Netflix? That medieval time show where um, it was like all about the crusades and there's the one guy who was very high up and then he fell from ranks. Nightfall. Nightfall. And I'm not saying that watch it in terms of for theology, but that's a very good description of how they viewed God and the sword and how they brought the right. The God's kingdom through the sword. Very often that, um, that, connotation of being peacemakers while well, I'm doing peace by the sword because I'm creating peace. I'm going to shut you down and make I'm going peace. to destroy those who oppose me in order to create peace. Right. And it, if this verse stood alone and theology of the rest of what Jesus said had no uh, meaning or bearing on anything, then I could see how people could read it that way. Okay. So, but, so what does Jesus mean then? But because of, of what Jesus taught throughout his entire ministry about his kingdom not being on this earth, about telling his disciples that they were or telling Pontius Pilate that his disciples weren't going to fight because his kingdom is not of this earth. Right. And then we look at the apostles and what they say. And there's something interesting that is um, said in, in James chapter three, uh, verses 17 and 18. And it says, and this is, this is what a true peacemaker should look like. Okay. It says, but the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits impartial and sincere and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Oh, okay. So, okay. So it's an interesting thing here 
of how those two verses are, you know, if you looked at them separately, you would be like, oh, that doesn't make sense. But right. you put them together and it's like, okay, so wisdom is these things, right? These these seven things. And the harvestness of righteousness, right, which is wisdom, um, is sown in peace by those who make peace. So we're being a peacemaker in this sense. So the, the, I mentioned seven ways, and, and verse 17 really talks about those seven ways. And so let's, I want, I want to kind of take each one. Let's and, do and, some Bible study together. Let's do that. I'm <laughs> sorry. I had a, I had a LaCroix burp. Dude, there. dude, this, <laughs> the bubblies give you the Ooh. burps. Yeah, they do. Whew. So if I step away from the mic for a second, that's what that <laughs> awkward silence is. Yeah, I get that. I get that. All so, right, bro. So the first thing we're uh, told uh, from wisdom up above is to first be pure. Okay. So what does pure mean? Well, um, purity uh, has a couple different connotations. And one is uh, we talked about this, the purity culture. Um, right, and as, mainly with sexual purity. Talking about sexual purity. Okay. And if you look at this verse and what it's talking about, um, in the pretext of this, it's not talking about sexual purity per se. Per se. Per okay. se, which means that it, it definitely could be construed as part of it, but not the in- entirety of it. Right. Like so, sexual purity is just a part of the whole package. Right. So being pure... Uh, is is more talking about being sanctified in our heart, right? Mm, the sanctification okay. process, and we're eventually going to do. We'll, we'll eventually get around to this uh, this podcast on sanctification. But yeah, we've been waiting for it. I'll do a quick uh, uh, a quick synopsis of of sanctification is the process of becoming um, holy or set apart. That is what sanctification means, right? So we're becoming holy in our heart, um, and this is through following the laws of Christ. You know, I, I kind of think of someone when they talk about, oh, their their intentions were pure. Like right. they had pure exactly. intentions when they were exactly. trying to go forward and do this. Right. And so if we look at Christ's laws, it's talking about love and loving our neighbor and loving others like we, uh, like Christ loves us. And this is the way, um, the sanctification. So if you're looking at that, this is where the Old Testament laws would kind of fall into place. Because if I'm loving you, I'm not going to murder you. I'm not going to lie. I'm Thank not going to steal. Thank you. I'm not going to do these things because I love my neighbor. Oh, and, and I'm I'm his neighbor. Hello, neighbor. Won't you be my neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. So, so the next thing of being a peacemaker, it says then peaceable, right? So pure than peaceable. Pure than peaceable. Peaceable. Okay. All right. Okay. So sorry, there was another one. <laughs> Lacroix um, getting you. It is. Dang, um, two for two. Yeah. So p- being peaceable means not seeking strife or war, okay? Okay. So I am not seeking out to create turmoil in somebody's life. I'm not seeking out to to um, become at odds with somebody um, over just, you know, whatever. Now, there's a difference between presenting truth and strife coming out of that truth, but we should never be the ones seeking it out. Okay, so do you think this is talking about those people who are like, they just like to be antagonistic? This is about the others? trolls. The trolls. Oh, we go on that <laughs> internet trolls now. Okay. That's, I think that's what it's talking about. And and just in everyday life, like people who like to see, like people who like to watch the world burn. Oh, very much so. But we'll, yeah. we'll first light the match and then watch right. it burn. They're, they're definitely not peaceable. Okay. Okay, so it's we're called to be... Live. So wisdom from heaven doesn't want to start strife right exactly and we're, we're called to be peace at peace with all men be right. peaceful with, to all, unto all men um so it's very important that we don't seek out that type of strife or war or um trying to cause issues or dissension in the church and, and stuff like that we're living peaceably right mm-hmm. i wonder how that plays into being a pacifist or not in terms of war which i don't know if we have time to go into tonight Let's let's okay. Let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. No, no, no. Let's stop there. You want to stop there? Okay. Let's stop there for a sec. We got a little bit of time. Yeah. So, uh, a pacifist, okay, sits back because um, they do not want to um, engage in an issue. So, as a peacemaker, we're called again. If we look back up, uh, we're called to enter the situation into hard situations to create peace. And if you're pacifist, that means you're just not getting involved in whatever's not peaceful. Right. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Right. But I mean, most pacifists is more because of the mainly I think of like, you know, uh, Mennonite churches and that that sect where they are Quakers, where they won't be involved in the nation's military even. Right. And, and, and we could go into discussing that. I don't 
um, I mean, that's a whole, that's, that's a, a whole other podcast. Topic. That's a whole I'm other a very, podcast. I'm a very patriotic person. So that's a whole nother. I think podcast. that'd be cool to get. I, I actually, this is just, this is a shout out, a call out. I think it'd be cool to talk with, you know, Joel DeMott about this because of him with it being a Mennonite pastor and they, mm. they preach pacifism and what does yeah. that look like versus not? I don't know. So that that's more being a peace a debate lover. Show. Uh, okay. I believe, and it's um, not wanting to enter into, into the um, world that we are called to be ambassadors to. Okay. That's more of abstaining from um, involvement. And we see that this happened in the uh, in First and Second Thessalonians, where Paul actually calls out those who are waiting on heaven and not getting involved even with work and stuff like that because they're like, oh, well, the kingdom's not Jesus on will this come earth. back. And well, whatever. the kingdom's not on this earth, and we're just going to wait on the Jesus to return. And that's not what we're called to do. We're called to be, to live in this world. And engage in it. And engage in it, right. Okay, correctly. cool. No, I like that. No, let's keep going, though. So we got pure, we got peaceable. So the next one is uh, gentle. Oh. Okay. So this goes back um, to partly speaking the truth in love, right? We talked about the Galatians 6 aspect of when we speak truth, we do it gently. Um, and, and and being gentle doesn't mean we we shy away from truth, or we shy away from situations. Mm. It means when we enter them, we are conscious about um, our words and our actions towards things to not be aggressive. It's more so handling the approach and remembering that the person, the person, the 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 vocal tones, the the body language that's being presented during that time. So this kind of reminds me of um, the the Andrew Wood conversation where he said when he was talking with people who are actually at Whole Resources and talking about abortion, where he's like, "We call out truth." Right. But they do it in a gentle manner. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So um, I like that. I like that. So so we need to be gentle um, in in these situations. These situations we're being peacemakers, right? So this mm-hmm. is another attribute um, and another, I guess, um, characteristic of a peacemaker that we can be gentle even in tough situations. I don't have to come in screaming and yelling. I can come in, you know, and just through my vocal tones and my bodily actions and uh, everything else still speak what I need to speak, but not present something that's offensive. You know, what I, I like mean? that. I like that. So number four is open to reason. So um, the best way to describe this one is again with another scripture where it talks about uh, being quick to listen, slow to speak, slow which to also wrath, comes out of James, which also comes out of James. So um, it's being quick in in situations where. Um, Somebody could say something rather than jumping to a conclusion. You hear them out. <laughs> so don't do the, the classic Twitter joke uh, about the oranges. It's like, I don't like oranges. Well, why are you saying oranges are bad? I didn't say oranges are bad. I just don't like them. Right. Like the classic <laughs> right. Twitter joke. Yeah, exactly. So we need to be able to listen and really understand the concept of what is being spoken or um, the situation that's around us really understanding the situation before we go charging in trying to create peace. Gotcha. Okay. So open to reason. So okay. Open to reason. Um, full of mercy and good fruits. Mm, I like me some apples. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, exactly. I had a dad joke, that one. <laughs> Fruit of the looms, right? Uh, that's what, no. That's what we all wear? I, I don't. Oh. <laughs> boomer. Okay, Boomer. Hey. Love that Karen. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I kid. Don't be a Karen. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anyways. Full okay. of mercy and good fruits. Full of mercy what on earth and does good that fruits. Mean? So as we are given mercy by God, we should extend mercy. As we are shown forgiveness, we should extend uh, forgiveness. So these attributes that God gives to us, we should extend. So if, if I slap you on the cheek, on the left side of your cheek, you should turn the right cheek, right? This is what Jesus talks about. That's showing mercy. I have every right, according, especially to the Old Testament, the Mosaic law, uh, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. We hear this so often. That is my right, you know? Oh, but we yeah, get, you hear that a lot. But we get into the New Testament and we're called to take and show mercy, hmm. to not necessarily do what is expected or that we have the right to do, but to show mercy um, to those situations that maybe um, normally wouldn't require require mercy. So, um, and and this is part of the good fruits. And he says, so full, uh, full of mercy and good fruits. This is talking about the fruits of the spirit, right? Gentleness, patience, love, uh, loving kindness, uh, long suffering. These, these fruits should be showing um, 
through a peacemaker. Yeah, and you can right. see that in uh, Galatians 6, 5? Yep. Uh, 6. six. Man, that's, Galatians my favorite, six. that's my favorite chapter in Galatians. <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking about what Coat said in the last episode about songs. Like, I know the fruit of my spirit. Well, fruit of my spirit. Fruit of the spirit because of an old uh, Steve Green song, The Fruit of the Spirit, that I learned oh. when I was like five, and I can still whip it out to this day. Let's hear it. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. The fruit of the spirit is gentleness. Or was faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Because when you live by the Spirit, let us keep in step. Keep in step with the Spirit. Do-do. And then there, it just keeps going, then it repeats itself a lot. So, so that so, was a special treat for You like that? <laughs> Yo, I think Capitol Records is going to hit me up. Be like, Mark, we want you to drop that on a CD. I think that's what Capitol Records is going to say. Maybe maybe Reach Records and, and Lecrae could hit, drop a little beat behind it. I, lo- I love you, brother. But no. But I don't think I have a voice I don't think that music wise. should not be put behind. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! All right, All right let's so move on. Full so, of mercy and good fruits. Right. So let's move on to number six and is uh, impartial. Right. So mm, what does okay. it mean to be impartial? What do you think it means to be impartial? I mean, I, I kind of think of my kids being impartial towards my kids. Of they both, you know, I don't favor like Elliot over Evie or Evie over Elliot. Like, right. I need to be impartial towards that. They're both my kids. They both receive all my love. Right. It's not, not showing favoritism. Right. So I don't think you know if if I should you know the the whole idea of the neglected kid like that's being partial towards your kid. Right. Well, you know? and and the same thing can happen in a certain situation. Say as a uh, as a pastor, um, you're called into a uh, marital quarrel. Uh, where the husband is saying mm. one thing and the wife is saying another. And what do you do? Do you take sides? And well, no, we're, we got to be impartial and stay and stick with the truth. Right. right. This is what the scripture says about the situation. And so with this, with, you know, not showing favoritism towards one group or another, I think of, uh, ah, is it first Corinthians where they're talking about the Lord's supper and how the apostle Paul said, you know, I mean, the Lord shows no favoritism, but, right. you know, they separate the rich and the poor. So, like, the rich are at the table and the poor are just out in the back picking up scraps like right. dogs. And the Apostle Paul says, like, and then he goes back to, you know, no, 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 like, there's neither Jew nor Greek, slave or right. free. We're all one in Christ. Right. So, therefore, God shows no favoritism, which yeah. is, I think, would be an interesting conversation about did God favor Israel or not? Did God show favoritism? That's another uh, conversation for another man, day. we need to write these down. We do. Someone who's my secretary could write that down. It'd be nice to have one of those. Um, Beth? <laughs> <laughs> calling out my crap for everyone no sorry oh goodness i love it um but you know so the fact of even in the christian christian world let alone outside in the world we're supposed to be impartial so i think it's interesting how christians were partial towards people inside our own community how do you think we're being partial towards those on the well, outside you and you have I mean? to you have to ask yourself is if you're being partial are okay. you being loving oh you're being loving towards the person you're being partial towards, but not towards the other person. Right, exactly. So my answer would be no, which you means go. you're not fulfilling God's commands of love your neighbor oh, as yourself. The, the and two- if you're not loving your neighbor, you're not loving God, which means you're breaking the greatest commandment, which oh, means, oh, snap. So, yeah. That, that, yeah, oh, I wish, I wish I had a rim shot ready. I didn't. Sh- okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, so well, we rocked pure, peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, and partial and last but certainly not least, because we're not partial to any of these. What do we got? Sincere. Ooh. So okay. it's, again, showing love by being sincere. Did you just use the word in the definition? I did. You, can, you can't do that. You surely can. Well, what does sincere mean? Sincere. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking it's surely and sincere. Sincere. So what does sincere like? Sincere means. You know, like, what does it mean? Like, seriously. You really should have sincere me. Sincerely <laughs> made fun of me there. <laughs> Sorry. That I did was... sincerely make fun of you. That's okay. <laughs> and guess what? I'm impartial against it. <laughs> um, Be open to reason, bro. Sin- Come on now. S- sincere means heartfelt. Right? Oh, okay. Like not so, fake. Not, not, yeah, exactly. Uh, when, when you're being sincere, I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, Mark, I love you. Like, that's not sincere at all. That's not heartfelt. Heartfelt being like, man, Mark, you know, Brother, I just, I really love you, man. Like, that's a, more of a sincere. Um, so what happens, though, if the person you're talking to has gotten under your skin, done some stuff, maybe they're not quite your enemy, but they're more like your frenemy. Well, so that's How do when, you be sincere in that, that you that's, know? That's when you got to be peaceful, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits and impartial. 
and go back to our episode on irresistible. Yeah, you just flipped that crap in my head. And then goes back to the irresistible, or not irresistible grace. <laughs> That's the tulip. Um, un- undeserved grace undeserved that we grace receive. And speaking the truth in love. And those go back so, to those thought processes. So even when somebody has wronged you, right, and you have to be sincere, you can still be sincere. I can sternly be sincere. Like, hey, I'm sincere, and I'm telling you right now, Mark, that what you're doing is not correct, and I love you. And that's why I'm telling you. Right. And that's still sincere. Mm-hmm. So. so. So, okay. So this is what the Bible says of what a peacemaker looks like. I'm thinking, okay, so how do we bring this into today's world? You know, we're in such a split climate with politics, right wing, left wing, um, with race, with uh, social economic status, um, the rich versus the poor, the, the business owners of like, you know, the Amazons and Walmart versus the employees get paid nothing. Our world right now is literally the definition of choose a side and fight for your side. That's what America is right now. So how do we as Christians enter into that culture and be peacemakers to that culture? Mm. Come back next week to RTC and find out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so you had to Let's ask a question. We were going to be able to land the plane uh, and then you had to ask another one. No, it's all right. No, but we can answer this one quickly. I mean, obviously it's going to look different it's, in every situation. It's, it's, and if you apply the seven principles, that should guide you through. You, you have to first be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. This mm-hmm. is what Romans tells us. All right? right. So if you are not, again, back to studying the Bible and prayer and every other topic we've been building up on, you have to build those foundational blocks in order to be in the mindset and the heart set to be able to be a peacemaker. Right. Because right. if, yep. if you can't live out being pure, being peaceable, being gentle, open to reason, all these things, then you're not going to be as an effective uh, peacemaker as you are called to be. Right, okay. Not that you want to be, but that you are called to be. That's a very important distinction right there. Um, because there's a lot of things I want. I like to eat ice cream, and I, I, I want a gallon of ice cream to eat right now. But that'd be dope. It's not what I'm called to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not the rabbit trail, but we rabbit trailed. Sorry. It's going to be so nice in heaven when you can eat some ice cream. And not get fat? No sin. If I walk into heaven and God's like, okay, here's your house. Here's Fuller's house. There's the gym. There's the, oh, back up, Jesus. Yeah. What? But see, sorry, sorry, Peter'd be showing us. But around. see, he's got a Dairy Queen right between the gym and our houses. But but if if I got to work out in heaven, not to, or in the New Kingdom, sorry, New Jerusalem and New, New, <laughs> New, New Heaven and New, New Earth, <laughs> and I got to make sure I don't get fat in the New Kingdom. That's gonna be that's gonna be sad because I have my perfected body. I mean, I, we're you know we're part of the Baptist Convention, the Southern Baptist Convention, and we all know that there's gonna be a buffet up in heaven, the Feast of the Lamb. The wedding feast. <laughs> the wedding feast, which means it's going to be a shindig. I mean, watch The Chosen, the right. wedding episode. I mean, that yeah. was a parte. It was a parte to the hilt. Side note, if you haven't watched The Chosen yet, watch, Chosen. watch it now. But anyway, so back to this. What Go, was going your, back into what, it. What was your question? <laughs> How do we, in today's very oh, that's separated right. climate, step in as peacemakers? So one one thing we have to do is we have to really understand what these points are. And again, I would I would encourage our listeners to go to James 3, 17 and 18. If you're not going to read much of your Bible this week, read those two verses and really sit and think about what those mean and what those look like. Well, um, it's coming up on a situation that is full of hate and showing love, speaking truth, but showing love. Mm -hmm. So in in today's climate, do it in a sincere, pure way. Right. We're going to, we're going to talk about race a little bit here. Okay. So we'll come up and I I got, um, somebody yelling at me, black lives matters, black lives matters. Okay. Yeah, they do matter. And you know who else matters? Everyone that's made in the image of God. And that's truth. And it's sincere. And it's gentleness. And it's being open to reason because I understand what they're saying. And not just come back and slam it. But like, let's, like, so what do you mean by yeah, that? Let's no, have the conversation. And, 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 let's not, and, not, and not just be like, all lives matters. You know, right. that's, yes, all lives matters. But that's basically shooting the other side. Right. And right so now. rather than, than let's go sit at the coffee shop and talk. But yeah, exactly. And it's having those conversations. It's having those, um, those hard moments where we have to be, um, we have to go into a situation and um, resolve the situation. So uh, we can't, we have to leave, live peaceably among all men, which means that um, if there's quarrel, we talk about if, you're, you know, if your brother has ought against you and you know about it, what are you supposed to do? Go to them. You're supposed to leave your offering at, at the, the altar. At the temple. And go to him right. and fix it, right? Right. So this is making peace with that brother who's at ought. Not that you have ought against, but that your brother has ought against you. Right. This has nothing to do with 
like, oh, I'm offended by Mark. It's no, Mark's offended by me, and I need mm. to go fix it. I need to go find out why. You're going to make peace. I got to go make peace. You know, it's something I think, too, that would help going into these conversations is having the mindset of, of being open-minded to the fact of I could be wrong, not prove me wrong, but you know what? Help me understand. I, I don't know if where I'm at is right or not, but just... Asking questions. Give me your viewpoint. And Asking questions. Yeah. And, and this is something that I'm still learning. And this was... um. This is going back to the uh, the I think it was the uncensored series. Actually, no, it was the real talk series. One of the real talk back in youth group where the whole idea this came from is the teenager said, "Ask more questions than you ask, because the more questions you ask, the more likely the the other person will be able to hear your side." And that's being open of like, "Hey, just help me help me understand where you're coming from." And when you do that, a lot of times they'll be okay. So where are you coming from? Right. And that'll and, let you be gentle and, and sincere and pure. And you're you, not you're not right. doing it just to build clout you're doing it to even if be even if they don't ask to hear your side right you still Ooh, have a, you still okay. have a better understanding of their side right so when you do have to speak the truth in love you know the better way to underdo it because you can speak right. to all and points. a lot of times both viewpoints have a common goal like okay so for like i think of the abortion conversation both sides are they have the same goal is we want what's best for the mom However, we were like, yeah, we, we, we agree with that. However, we come out of, whoop, I like, we come out of completely different sides, right. but the goal is, oh no, this is what's best for the mom. No, this was best for, okay. So let's, let's be open here. Let's have this conversation, but you right. still have to know what is truth because right. you got to speak what we said, the truth and love and a gentle, so, full of mercy in matter, but you also have to be pure and sincere in how you do it. So it all has a converging theme. Okay. You know what the converging theme is? I'm um, guessing love God, love others. You got it. Loving others. All right. So we go to make peace because we love them mm. and we love God. So that's why we go to do this. And it's not, peace doesn't look like, um, it doesn't always have to be that you're um, agreeing to disagree or you're agreeing, but you're not really agreeing, agreeing internally. It doesn't have to be a giving in to things. Mm, okay. That's okay. Not, not that's giving not, in. That's, that's not being a peacemaker. That's being a peace lover. That's being a peace lover or, or a peace keeper in some instances. So I think about marriage, right? Mm -hmm. And if I disagree with my wife, not that I ever disagree with my wife, <laughs> that's not true either. But, <laughs> but, but if I disagree, if I disagree with my wife, um, it's it's holding back my true feelings, my true understanding of the situation, and my true thoughts um, to be a peacekeeper and just keep the peace in the household. Mm. You still have to have the conversation and do it in all these ways we just learned about. Making peace, and it's also keeping peace. So, Yeah. No, that's really good, dude. So you got anything else, man? Let's let's land this yeah, plane. Let's land been, it. Um, no, I mean, I think I've kind of said my piece on that. When it comes to being, <laughs> you like that? That was totally an accident, but peace. so dang cool. So peace, no. Laters. Um, no, but at the end of the day, you know, I like, I like this list of seven. Pause. <laughs> Come on now. You just paused me. You, you said rabbit trail. <laughs> you said at the end of the day, Janelle and I were talking the other night. She goes, you know... <laughs> Mark says that at the end of the day, an a awful lot. lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's, like, yeah, it's, we, it's, it's a segue term for me. We, we say a lot of things a lot. I'm sorry. It was just, that's really made, funny. But at the end laugh. of the day, yeah, no. at the end of the day, no, but unpause. But, <laughs> you're ridiculous, <laughs> sincere, but ridiculous. But you know, at the end I of the day, you. these seven things I think are, you know, if we apply these seven things, we take it, we think about it, we apply it how much different our world will look. Mm. As Christians, how much different would our relationship with other people be? With our families, with our kids, with our spouses, with our best friends, with our frenemies, with our enemies. Right. How much would our world just look like a better place if we take these seven characteristics to go change the world it for would, Jesus? It would probably look more like the heavenly kingdom. hey oh, because these are attributes of the kingdom. Ooh. I love it. That's all I got, bro. What you got for final thoughts? Nothing, man. Uh, I, I like I said it I encourage everybody to go listen to this and uh or listen to this. Go read this scripture. <laughs> or you can listen to James it on James three, seventeen through eighteen. Uh, you can listen to it on U version too. There so you I go. guess you could listen to it. But uh yeah, man, I, I just encourage people to go do that and um and look at it, study it for themselves. So that's all I got. Ten, four, fun facts.
<laughs> All right, my dude. We is in week three of January 2021. 2021. What fun fact do you got to carry us through till next Thursday, my dude? I don't have a fun fact. Oh, crap. Okay. Uh, um, no, no, I have a fun fact. Come on now. I mean, but I'll say I'm like, oh, uh, I got... Half I mean, of our listener base only listen to, for the fun fact. Most of the listener base. <laughs> Everyone's like, we don't care what you're talking about. We just want the fun fact. <laughs> Fast forward. Oh, there it is. Okay, found it. Hey, good, we, we're good. We hear the kids laughing. We know where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> well, my dude, what fun fact do you got for us today? So, the fun fact of the day is, did you know that... Cows hate country music. Huh? Cows hate country <laughs> music. But aren't like a lot of the dairy farms like... In the country? Yeah. Well, supposedly they hate being... Hate listening to country music. Okay, explain this. Because this is... I don't, I don't believe this. Cows okay. hate country music. So you'd think that cows would vibe with the country music. You just use my word. I'm, I'm vibing you, with you that. Vibing, I, you vibing? Yep, yep, it's a vibe. But it's yep. actually not the case. Mood. According to research... Cows produce 3% less milk when listening to country music. The study was conducted on a Scottish herd of 45 cows, which were made to listen to classical music and country music. With classical music, their milk production increased, with one particular cow making one liter more milk than usual. Dang. Uh, however, with country music, 44 cows were observed to yield 3% less milk. So what I'm hearing you say is country music is not the best type of music. Not you can save a horse and ride a cow. <laughs> Sorry, that was not appropriate. <laughs> I, Most people don't even know what reference you just said. I know that's why I stopped. Uh, she this is a Christian she, PG show. I'll go back to this. She thinks my tractor sexy because I think of the John Christ. Have you seen that video? On YouTube. Oh. Where he's doing like a parody of like, she thinks my tractor's sexy. And so he's like driving a tractor and it's singing. And his like wife comes up with like lunch. She's like, this is stupid. I don't, how is this even a joy? Eat your lunch. Why don't you just come in the house like a normal person? <laughs> <laughs> oh, our country him. folk just, and we interviewed <laughs> two so, Tennessee sorry. pastors or, or but, ministry people in the last But I two thought weeks. it was funny. It's That's funny. cows hate country music. That 3% less milk. That's that's something. Fact. Well, cows may hate country music, but we love you, RTC listener, RTC fam. We love you guys so much. Well, hey, just like always, we say to the end of every show, we want to keep the conversation. So reach out to us, DM us on Instagram, message on Facebook, email, Twitter, call us, leave us a voicemail. We can get that to it, pipe it into the show, even if we want to as well. Um, but seriously, guys, hit it up, dude. Check out the website, realtalkchristianpodcast.com, where you can get to the shop and, the sh and buy and some merch. Buy some merch. Some 2021 merch. We didn't get a 2021 line. We Yeah, we still have a lot of lines to do. We have a lot of things <laughs> to do. But either way, hit us up, check it out. We want to keep the conversations going because let's be honest, Real community starts with real conversations. Right. You know what I'm saying? I love it. I'm vibing with you. You're vibing with that? Well, guess what? The cows were a mood. <laughs> Anywho. But hey, we love you guys. You're just milking it now. I'm... <laughs> oh, Sorry. my goodness. What was that? I don't even know how to end it after that. <laughs> well, well, until next time, guys. Take it easy. <laughs>